Hi all, Shane here at All Last 67 and uh, coming to you with the start of what I call my vengeance project. Um, it's my pet project for bolt action, don't worry I'm not going into too much detail, but uh, I'm creating an army list or a, an army to play um, in response to a series of crushing defeats and humiliations I've had against a few of my mates. So I'm calling it my vengeance list, which is designed to be the most nasty of nasty, almost the point of being on sportsmanship, just to snatch defeat, uh, victory from the jaws of defeat. So at the beginning of my vengeance list, as I call it, it's going to begin with um, a review of Warlord's SS Strum Battalion Charlemagne, um, 10 28mm World War II Fuffin SS veterans, a uh, very nice box art, as you can see. Lovely pictures of the models in the back, fully painted. Great painting guy, that. Really like this chapter with the MG42 fire from the hip. He actually reminds me a lot of Tamiya's 135th scale um, frontline infantry, as in there's a chap similarly firing uh, from the hip, which actually was in the German field manual. There was actually a recommended way to fire an MG42 and 34 from, your hip, from the hip. Uh, slightly different to how he has it, you actually held on to one of the bipod legs and pulled down to help correct the the, the, um, the lift, if you will, from the uh, the recoil. Though, mind you, this was more designed um, as a, an emergency procedure of not an enemy soldier came in 10 meters, you opened up on him. Also, a very cool chap here is a guy with a Sturmgewehr 44, he, but he's also holding a combat knife in his left hand, I think. Uh, or right hand should I say. Very cool. So we'll have a look. So these are French volunteers who fought for the Foff and SS and they weren't like a security troop. They're actually these guys are even these guys even uh, took part in the defence of Hitler's bunker. They're they're that fanatical. So let's have a, a crack open and have a look see what we get in the box. So we get a cardboard spacer, not really important. And we here we go, here's all the minis. So they come in a clam. Very good to see that they started including MDF bases, which is something they didn't always do with their metal blisters. I love the smell of uh, laser cut wood. So it's always more kind of barbecue for some reason. So you get 10, 2, 4, 6. Yeah, you get, you get 10 laser cut MDF bases. Always good. Saves you a bit of time and money having to buy new bases. Often that's the case. So we'll start pulling them out. So we shall tilt it down and have a look. So again, figures do not come with heads, or they do come with heads, but they come separate, so you can paint your head separately. You can see how small, um, for any of you who have never seen 28mm models, these are 1 to 56, or 1 to 54. So they're pretty small, but yes, yeah, packed full of detail. And they're big enough that you can paint quite easily, and actually is. Uh, seeing it from this angle, you can actually see that the MG42 gunner is in fact firing the correct way by hanging on to the bipod to correct the recoil. Very nice, has molded on um, swastika detail as in the German Eagle and the small French flag uh, flash that would have been on his left shoulder. Nice detail, a little bit of flash, but again this is to be expected with future models. Another guy here, to this appears to be um, perhaps an NCO. Uh, he's got a Sturmgewehr 44, but apparently he's putting what looks to be a gun sight on his. Now this isn't looks to be a Vampir, which is the German I war fighting sight. I don't. It doesn't look to be one of them. So um, I've never seen an example with a uh, of SG 44s with. Um, Sights on them, so uh, I'll look into that. It's kind of cool. I didn't notice that. I didn't. I didn't notice that in the the box art. Very nice detail. He's like in a great coat and the great coat uh, flushers underneath him, which is this little area here. Very nicely detailed. Very crisp. Again, a little bit of flashing here and there, but in white metal, uh, that's a couple of seconds. This is um, the NCO of the unit, if you will. Uh, again, very nice. He's got an unusual weapon here. I think that's. Um, 
an, M uh, an MP38, I think, or it could be a French Mat machine gun. On, on, I don't know because I know that near the end of the war they were using a lot of captured weapons that they had captured from the countries from the Blitzkrieg, cam Blitzkrieg campaigns just to uh, equip their units for the last few weeks of the war. Okay, so another guy carrying a Panzerfaust, and that's a Panzerfaust 60, I think. Uh, MG or MP44 or MP40 with a uh, stock again, lovely detail, very well. So like, so far so good. I haven't seen any real downside of these models. There's a lot of um, um, SGs in this. There's a lot of assault rifles. This is the guy with the combat knife. Very nice again. A little bit of clean up's gonna be necessary, but nothing to be upset about. This is my first time actually looking at these two, so I'm pretty, I'm kind of enjoying this. is uh, probably a bit more than a year. Probably one of my favourite guys. Quite heavily laden in equipment. Has an MG belt around his neck. He's a, he's got a Panzerfaust. Uh, bit of everything on him. And then the big grey coat wrapped over. That's going to be a beautiful model to paint. I can't wait to paint these up. So the next time you'll see these, it should be fully painted. I want to give. I want to actually have a go try and P dot camo on. Here's the little smaller Panzerfaust 30, smaller little one or Panzerfaust 20, I think the one. Um, the the number designations the Panzerfausts have are armored fists. Um, they were they are actually in relation to the range. So the Panzerfaust 60 had 60 feet range to 20 20 feet range. Reality to be probably in the 20 to 30 feet or the 20 feet maybe mark for the most part, just to guarantee penetration of enemy armor. Um, these things were quite lethal, and they had many, many of them. I think there's like six or seven million of these here in the war. Very easy to use as well, and they were they were equivalent of the modern AT4 anti-tank weapon that you fired it and then you just threw it away. It was a disposable one-shot weapon, so that means the men didn't have to worry about uh, carrying that much equipment in the long run. Now, this chap here is carrying a PPSH uh, Soviet submachine gun with his big 71 round drum mag so you can feel these are very us front or eastern front um, orientated again beautiful detail uh, a loose rifle car 98 or carbineer 98 more SG goodness because having two dice shooting and two dice in assaults is always a good thing especially when you're doing my asshole list that's just packed full of SGs yes I'm going to be one of them guys but uh, on my defence, my entire army, bar some of my critical units, are going to be inexperienced. So any bolt action players will know the risks of taking that. But uh, they're going to be green, so it's going to be interesting. It'll be a lot of fun to play them. Chap lying down, nothing too crazy here. Then we have the heads, and the heads come in two sprues of five. Each one of them is different, so they will have character of their own. Nice, very nice detail, and they don't seem to suffer from the squashed face syndrome that uh, many of Warlord's um, scopes used to do, Some, not all of them, but you always get one or two heads in uh, a metal set that was like a bit with squashed heads. So you get guys with uh, bare heads, you get guys with peak caps or um, forged caps, should I say. All different, which is good. One guy has like a bandage around his eye, so a lot of character. Uh, here comes the next one. These guys mostly have the helmets with the covers. Again, very characterful heads, really nice actually. So these should take paint very nicely. So I'm going to try P dot and oak leaf on most of these guys. I've never done this before, I never tried that uh, oak leaf camouflage. And it's probably one of the most demanding camouflage patterns of them all. A lot of people think oak leaf is difficult, I actually think oak leaf is quite easy. So I was doing a couple of tutorials. Again, I know these are wargaming figures, but it doesn't matter. Uh, they p you use the same technique for the most part. 35 for painting camouflage you might just put a bit more highlight into it and that's about it so I'll probably do um, a tutorial on P dot camo and oak leaf camo uh, the oak leaf is beautiful absolutely beautiful and uh, we'll do P dot both the uh, summer and autumn versions kind of the ones that kind of the orange orange to it so that's uh, this little review these are beautiful models if anyone's just looking for a nice little weekend painting thing a little painting project I strongly recommend I think these retail about £15 so they're pretty good it's a nice little package um, I've also speaking of which I've got their ride um, just weathered up at the moment 
So we'll do a proper video, video of everything together. I just yet the end at the end. Uh, I've yet to add the MG42 and a bit more rust around the spare wheel, and that's about it. I kind of weathered this a little bit too heavy, but I'm pretty happy with it. And a bit more rust around the hitch and the radiator, I believe, which is that yoke. I'm not entirely sure what that is. As in the this this whole in, in all like the models and photographs I've ever seen, it always seems to be kind of a rusted color. So I, I always paint mine in the rust. So yeah, so next time you see them, they'll all be painted up. But I will take one of these figures once I figure out how to do a P dot and do a P dot tutorial, and I'll take another one of these videos and do an oak an oak leaf. Um, so I know it's something that people often find useful is how to do German camo because it's one of those things that a lot of people are frightened to do, and understandably so because it's an, it's a more an intimidating thing than a difficult thing. So I hope this interview or interview I hope this um, review was of interest. Um, stay tuned for more Fengeance list uh, updates. I'll be g adding more to my list. It's going to be semi mechanized for anyone that's interested. So it's going to be furry fire maneuver, move quick, lots of dice and fire, and lots of dice in close quarter. But the minute I start taking fire, I'm going to be in trouble. Which is uh, an in uh, an uh, an infidability. I can't even say the word. It's inevitable in the bolt action to take fire. And uh, I'm going to be getting my ha my hands on. Wait for it, River Counters, you're going to lose it. Because I'm going to use the term that nobody likes to use, because it's the wrong term. I'm going to be buying myself a hetzer for this. Um, to um, weather up in the ambush style camo. Or should I say Jagdpanzer 38T. Um, beautiful. One of the best tanks destroyers of the war next to the Jagdpanzer. So um, I was going to add a panther to this list but by adding the the smaller hexer, lower cost. It's a thousand point list, so it's a lower point cost, so I can put more units in and bulk up. Because uh, in the game, how it works, you hit on everything hits on a tree. Then you put your modifiers. So if the unit moves, it's plus one to hit. So four if it's behind cover, but it'll be a hard cover like a wall. Plus two if it's behind the thing. So normally you'll hit a target from a, a tree to a five, and then you roll to kill them. Which you don't say like that in the book, but you roll to kill them. You roll to wound them. And uh, for a veteran list, which this is going up against, uh, I need a roll to five to wound commandos, whereas my mate who will be fighting against me will only need a roll of a tree, because I'm inexperienced. So, very fragile unit, so I need to make up with it by mass firepower. Just to keep his head down, to intimidate him into not actually engaging to his full effect. So, he, he will come to, I'm going to speak more about my tactics, why I pick certain units, other than just being an asshole. And uh, I am developing a strategy. And if my mate watches this, and I'm screwed, because he'll just have a complete counter to it. So, I will catch you all in the next one. Enjoy your week. I hope your week is going well. I know it's only a Wednesday. It's wonderful weather here in Ireland. Uh, you can tell I'm Irish, because I'm not going to show you, but I was in the sun for a couple of hours with Lady Lance. And um, and today with my mate, just having a kick about, and I'm burnt to a crisp. So you can always tell the paddies are mild away because we burn in the sun like no tomorrow. So, so another little piece of Irish trivia. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this interesting. Stay safe. Watch out for those buses. And as always, happy modelling. Shane out. Bye bye.